Good morning, everyone. It's good to be with you again for worship this morning, and today we're celebrating the baptism of Jesus. And so we will be talking about uh, what that baptism, what our own baptism means for each of us as we live out our lives here and, and as we relate to one another and as we relate to the people, all of God's people. And so um, as we do so, um, well, let me say first that I will spend a little bit of time at the beginning of the sermon time uh, reflecting a little bit on the events of this past week, which uh, I think we need to take a look at and understand where do we fit into this and what is, what is, our, what is a good response for us as, as believers, as God's people. And so uh, that will take place a little later. But as we begin, uh, and think about baptism, think about our own baptism as well as baptism of Jesus. I share with you a... a a brief reading, and, uh, and then we will continue with our worship. We've come together today as children of God to praise and worship our Father, the creator of heaven and earth. We gather as people from all walks of life. But while we are together, we have two things in common. We have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And we all have a Father who specializes in forgiveness. Let us come repenting of our sins, being baptized, no longer with water, but of the Holy Spirit. Here we are, God. We are your beloved children. Be pleased with our worship today. Dear Father, amen. And so we continue in that spirit. We begin our worship, continue our worship in the name of the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning. Thank you, Pastor Don. What a heavy week, month, year. Well, you know what I mean. I want to acknowledge the pain that is all around us right now and the sizable challenge ahead of us. To that point, I'd like to read a joint letter from the five ELCA bishops of our southwest region of the United States. Check it out. Dear people of Region 2 of our Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, there are times when events in our nation and world are shocking. We search for words to try to make sense of what we are seeing on television. Today's events at the Capitol Building in Washington, D.C. are no different and have left us with a sense of foreboding, concern, disbelief, anger, sadness. Are we really seeing this? Is it possible that such a thing is happening in this country at the very seat of our democracy. As bishops serving the region too, we stand united in calling upon elected leaders of all political parties to call for an end to this violence. We decry any leaders who would incite an assault on the democratic process of our great nation and call upon them to publicly renounce their calls for people to storm the Capitol. Their actions have put our elected leaders and members of law enforcement in danger. We pray for an end to this violence and for the safety of those who are in danger. We urge the people of our congregations and ministries and all people of faith and goodwill to pray for peace and a quick restoration to order, as well as a peaceful transition of power in the coming two weeks. We pray for an end to the rancor of deep political divisions that have plagued this country in recent times. We pray for those who feel their voices are not being heard to find more productive and peaceful ways to register their concerns. We pray for the willingness for our leaders to work with those with whom they may differ to advocate for the needs of all people they have been called to serve. And we pray for peace and reconciliation in Christ to reign in our hearts, amen. And the bishops are Murray Fink, Andy Taylor, Deborah Herderer, Jim Gonier, and our Bishop Mark Holmrud. I think those words, are some that we can all join in as we pray for the future of our country as well. In addition to this unrest, the cases of COVID are still on the rise and we will continue to stream our services and engage in ministry remotely. I do wanna give you an update from our call committee as to where we are in the process. This is also in the e-news so you can read it again if you'd like. Last month, the call committee met with Deacon Margie Schmidt-Ager, the newly appointed call process assistant for the Sierra Pacific Synod. She has a good understanding of Bethel's ministry site profile, 
which describes our congregation and the qualities we are looking for in our next lead pastor and has begun creating a slate of candidates for us. Over the next few weeks, the committee will complete the preparation of the interview questions while Deacon Margie is looking at potential candidates. As we move through the candidate process, the call committee must follow strict confidential confidentiality per ELCA guidelines and is not able to share specifics of candidates or the discernment process. We continue to be grateful for the congregation's thoughts, prayers, and goodwill. So let's all continue to keep the call committee in our prayers. Please now also save the date for our winter congregational meeting, which will be on Sunday, January 31st, following our worship service, which will be around 1145. So make sure you uh, tune in and join us. Now I'd like to have Amanda share what is going on with her young kids and their families. Thank you, Tom. So for our children's ministry programs here at Bethel, our Kid Connection Sunday School meets every Sunday at 10 a.m. by Zoom. And last week, all of our kids received their supply bags. So in these bags has activities that they'll do each Sunday along with the lesson. If you know of someone that would like to participate with us and would love a bag, please let me know. Just email me or call me and I'll be glad to uh, talk with you about options. Our third through fifth grade group meets every other Sunday and they're meeting today. We're meeting at 1 p.m. by Zoom and we'll be catching up, finding out how our break was, and we'll be playing some games. And then our Kid Connection Parent Fellowship Group meets every Sunday at 2 p.m. also by Zoom. Take care and let me know if I can help you with anything. Bye-bye. Our middle school and senior high kids continue to meet on Zoom each Sunday morning, and our senior hires and young adults also meet on Wednesday nights. For our adults, please join our weekly coffee hour right after the service and check out the other opportunities on the Bethel website. Now I've got a special treat for you. I'd like you to check out this video talking about next Sunday's worship service. Hi everybody, um, I'm Katie. It's great to see you today. I'm really looking forward to leading you all in worship uh, coming up. Hi everyone, I'm Rachel and I'm so excited for us to have a chance to just reflect and have a sense of peace that we haven't been able to experience in the last few months. Hi everyone, I'm Brian and I'm looking forward to seeing you all worship and I am looking forward to communion. Hi everyone, I'm Tyler and I'm excited to explore Dr. Martin Luther King's story and the stories of other members of the civil rights movement. I am Molly and I'm excited to, uh, for everyone to be inspired by the life and words of Dr. Martin Luther King. Hey, I'm Alex. Uh, I'm excited to worship with you all and to think and wonder about the dreams that we might have for the world and how they coincide with God's dream for the world. I am Chris. I am excited to have Alex with us and to hear his message. Hi, I'm Tom. I'm excited to be part of planning a worship service with this group of uh, young folks, all of the young folks. Um, and um, I think it's going to be a great Sunday. So make sure you tune in next week. Yes, we are excited about the service and want you to be a part of it. So please email me a one sentence video completing the sentence, I have a dream. It'll take you less than a minute to record and send it to me. So there's no excuses. We really want you to be part of this service with our friend Alex LaChapelle, who is a missionary in Africa at home in Wisconsin right now due to the global, global epidemic. With all that being said, please join our opening song, The River. I know a place where we can go to lay our troubles down, eating your soul. I know a place where mercy flows, take the stains, make you whiter than snow like a tide it is rising up deep inside a current that moves and makes you come alive living water that brings the dead to life
dreams that have made me born again. Like a tide, it is rising up deep inside a current that moves and makes you come alive. Living water that brings the dead to life. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We're going down to the river, down to the river, down to the river to pray. Yeah, yeah. Let's get washed by. Your servants are listening. Spirit of creation and renewal, hover over our gathering this day as you hovered over creation on that first day. Enter into our hearts and our lives as you did on the day of our baptism. Descend on us like a dove as you did on Jesus' day of baptism that we may hear again your words of love and adoption. Speak from the heavens into our minds, that we may perceive your words of guidance and wisdom. Amen. The world needs greetings, virtual hugs, and positive messages right now. So please take a moment and share the peace of the Lord with those near and far. Peace of the Lord be with you.
Good morning. So I'm wondering if you can guess what one of the things that I'm going to talk about today. That's right, water. I want to talk to you about water and what water means to us. I know we drink water. Our body needs water to survive. We wash with water. We wash our hands. We take showers. We take baths. We clean ourselves with water. And all of the living creatures and organisms around us all need water to survive. Our plants in our garden, all the living beings in the ocean, all the creatures in the forest, everything around us needs water to survive. So I want to connect that to something. Today, we actually are going to talk about baptism. Do you know what baptism is? I know many of you were baptized when you were babies, maybe some when you were a little older, and maybe some of you are still thinking about being baptized and what that means to you. So when we baptize someone here in the Lutheran Church, the, pa the pastor sprinkles water on that child's head, baby's head, adult's head, and says some really special words. And it's a reminder that we are forgiven, that we are loved by God, that we are children of God. So I was thinking this morning, isn't it pretty cool that the element used is water in baptism? And this is the same thing that we partake, we drink, we wash with, and we need it. We need it to survive. Right? I mean, water we need to survive and live here on earth. But it's also the symbol used in baptism as a connection that we are children of God. And because of God's grace, because of God's love, we have eternal life. Wow. I mean, it's pretty amazing. So when you have your glass of water today, or maybe wash your hands, I'd like you to think about God and this gift, this gift of love, that we are children of God because God loves us. All right, I'd like you to go ahead, prepare your heart and mind for prayer, and let's close in prayer. Good and gracious God, thank you for your love that is with us every day. Thank you for water and for words and your grace and the promise that reminds us that we belong to you. In your name we pray. Amen. All right. Have a great day and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Our first lesson is found in Acts chapter 19, the first seven verses. While Apollos was at Corinth, Paul took the road through the interior and arrived at Ephesus. There he found some disciples and asked them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? No, we have not even heard there is a Holy Spirit. Then what baptism did you receive? John's baptism. Paul said, John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. He told the people to believe in the one coming after him that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul placed his hands on him, the Holy Spirit came on them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. There were about 12 men in all. Here ends the first lesson. Our gospel for this year is going to be Mark, and we will today be reading from Mark chapter 1, verses 4 through 11. And so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preaching of ba the baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him. Confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair and with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me comes the one more powerful than I, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. 
I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. Here ends today's gospel. Let us begin with a word of prayer. Good and gracious God, as we gather again around your word, let your spirit guide us, lead us, teach us. Help us to hear again of your unconditional love for not only for us, but for all of your children. Be with us now in this time together. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. As we begin, I want to add one reading to the two readings that you uh, heard and read just a couple minutes ago. Uh, I want to read uh, from first, uh, the first chapter of Genesis. It's one of the assigned reading, which we, readings which uh, was assigned for this Sunday, but we don't normally use more than two of the readings, so this is a reading from Genesis. And you probably know this pretty well already. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was formless, a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. I will use as a basis for the message this morning the readings, the two that you heard, the reading from Acts, and also the gospel for the day, the baptism of Jesus. Before I do that, before I get too much into that, I want to take some time and address the events of this past week, especially the events in Washington, D.C. that happened Wednesday. I was just appalled. I sat and watched on TV. I heard what was happening, and I just stayed and kept watching. And I was shocked. I was perplexed. I was even feeling some fear. It's one of those times when you wonder, how can this be happening? How can this be happening that a group of people committed to hatred and violence and fueled by our own president could come into this setting and overtake the Capitol building as they did? And so I thought about that, and I thought about what is, how do we respond to that? How do we feel about that? How do we, as children of God, as believers in Jesus, a nonviolent person who taught nonviolence, who taught the way of love, not the way of hate, the way of compassion, the way of caring for one another, how do we as followers of Jesus understand and, and respond to that? I suggested as a theme for this morning, Baptized We Live. It's, it's a title of a book by a small booklet by Daniel Erlander. And he wrote this book in four chapters, intending for bringing people together and understanding more fully our Lutheran church, our beliefs, our faith, including the sacraments, including baptism. And he made it clear in that book that it isn't just about being baptized as a baby or any time in our life with water and the words, maybe in a church setting or otherwise. That takes place for most of us. And yet, it's more about what that baptism means, means for the rest of our lives. And I thought about that. What does it mean that we are baptized with the Spirit of God? I shared that first lesson because it had the image of the, the wind, the breath of God, blowing over the waters in the beginning of creation. The Hebrew word ruha is the, is the word for the breath of God, 
the breath of God at creation. God breathed and it was. And so we have that image. We have also in the New Testament, the Greek word for the Holy Spirit, the breath is pneuma. It's a word that means the spirit of God, the breath of God, the presence of God. And it wasn't just in Jesus' baptism that it happened that the breath of God or the spirit of God came upon him. It came into him. It entered him. He was filled with the spirit, the Holy Spirit. I would suggest in our baptism, the same happens to us. It's interesting in the first reading, the reading from the book of Acts, these disciples, these followers were, were, were talking and they were asked, well, who's whose name, into whose name were you baptized? And they replied, we were baptized by John, and I guess in John's name, and baptized for the repentance of sin. And then they were told, were you they were asked, were you baptized with the Holy Spirit? And the answer is almost humor humorous. There is the Holy Spirit? We didn't know that. And then they went ahead and were baptized with the Holy Spirit. Hands were laid upon them and they were received the visible evidence of the Holy Spirit at that moment. And very much like Jesus, the voice from heaven uh, spoke out at that time. The heavens were open and said, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. And so it's a kind of a exploding of God into life. It's the heavens open up and God enters in a new way. And I like to think of that each time a child or a young adult or an adult of any age is, is baptized, I like to think that's what happens when we lay our hand upon the child and say, receive the Holy Spirit. You are marked with the cross of Christ forever. And that's what happens. We don't always understand it, but that's kind of how sacraments are. They have meaning the sacrament of baptism, the sacrament of Holy Communion. We receive those knowing that we are receiving a special blessing from God. Unless we spend the whole time talking about that part of, that part of uh, baptism, I think it's even more important that we say, what does baptism mean for everyday life? What does it mean for those of us who are believers, who are followers of Jesus? What does it mean in the light of this past week? the events of this past week. It means that we need to feel the presence and spirit of God within us and become that to other people. We need to speak out when, when it's needed, when someone needs to hear the words of hope, the words of challenge, the words of love that, can, that we can share. It comes to us in a variety of ways and it comes through us to other people. And people need to be held accountable. Evil cannot win over good in life. It just cannot happen, otherwise we all end up in a dark place. And that's not good. There's too many good people and too many good opportunities and too many good things happening. The upside of this is that in a state where we thought it was going to be, uh, continue to be uh, dominated by, by somewhat uh, uh, a party that is not promoting the good of the people, but the good of themselves instead. It, we had the, the, the light shining when two uh, people who were loving, caring people were elected into the Senate. And it gave a balance, it gave some power there so that it wouldn't be all one-sided. It gives the opportunity to work together, to work in a different direction. And it reminds us that far too long, a big number of people, a big percentage of our population have not really been a part of the goodness of life that we share. They have been held back, they have been marginalized. They have been told that you're not worthy, you're not as good as. And so it's a good opportunity for us. And I sat down this uh, day after, uh, I sat down Thursday morning and put together a letter. And you can see that in the, in the newsletter or maybe a separate mailing, I'm not sure which it'll, it'll go out, but which way it went out. But I, I want you to see that and read it and think about it. 
because we want to be on the side of good. We want to be on the side of what is, uh, what is compatible with what we believe, with what we say as God's people, that we want to do what God desires for all his children. We want to be there and we want to be the word of hope, the word of love, the word of compassion, the word of forgiveness. And we want to challenge the powers that be. We want to speak the truth to power when necessary. And that's not easy. It's not easy because sometimes they're told, well, especially in a church, well, that's getting too much into politics. <laughs> you know, well, it might be, but unfortunately or fortunately, whichever way, politics, the political part, that part of life is a part of life for us too. As long as we're living here on earth in this life, we're not of the world, but we are in the world. And we need to function and we need to share the good news in whatever way we can. And so as we think about what it means, the peaceful, uh, uh, the peace of God that's with us, the spirit of God that is among us, uh, we usually say that, uh, uh, you know, in the name of the Father, the Creator, the Son, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, peace be with you. And so it's, it's important that we look at these things. It's important to, to see how it is that we, that we go forth in life, in our daily decisions, in the, the, the things that we do with our time and our resources. They're all part of who we are as God's people filled with the Holy Spirit. And we need to let that show. And we need to continue doing what we can to be better, better informed about some of these things that are happening and some of the things that are limiting some of the people and letting others have the way beyond the fair share of all that is here in this world. And so as you think about that, I hope you'll think about these things and think about how how baptism, what it means for you. What are, the, what are the dreams that you have? What are the things that you think about that, that you want to happen in a good way? I believe it's next Sunday, I think, uh, Tom and the youth, um, young people are going to uh, lead the worship. I'm going to be on vacation for a week, and it's, it, they're going to be talking about, it's just the day before Martin Luther King uh, Day, and, and so Martin Luther King Jr. Day, I should say, and it's just a... Uh, they're going to be talking about uh, some of the, his quotes, I have a dream speech, some of those, and uh, Tom has put out a message to, to let us know, let him know, what is your dream for this year? And my dream is that all of us become more attuned to the uh, sensitivities of the needs of all of the people, all of God's people, and that all God's people have an equal chance and equal justice and equal opportunity and that we can truly become who God calls us to be, his followers, showing his love, his care, his concern for all his people. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Baptized in Christ Jesus, we are.
baptized in his death, that as Christ is raised victorious, we might live a brand new life. And if we have been united, Gracious Lord, thank you for this new year filled with new possibilities, experiences, and opportunities. We look forward to the positives 2021 will bring, joyful in the promise of our baptism. We pray for the wisdom to trust in you to lead a new pastor to shepherd us. Be with those on the call committee, Peter, Mary, Margaret, Lisa, Leah, Hope, Dave, Anne Marie and Amelia. Grant them perception and discernment as they prepare to interview. We pray for our nation. Wednesday's riot at the U.S. Capitol not only took an American life, it exemplified the sins of greed, pride, and need for power. Lead us to repentance. Have mercy on us. Empower elected officials to lead with dignity and govern with humility. We ask that your loving embrace surround those mourning the loss of loved ones. Be with Chris and his family as they mourn the loss of Chris's father, Bob. Comfort Nick and his family as they mourn the loss of Nick's brother, John. And be with Amanda as she mourns the loss of Mrs. Sparks. We pray for those in our lives and in our Bethel community in need of your healing. Be with Bill and Carol as they recover from their surgeries. Heal Betty, Shirley, Bill, Jerome, Shirley, Christine, Connie, Angie, and my mother Sandy, all dealing with cancer. We pray for Gail as her leg continues to heal. Be with the caregivers and those who need your healing care. Enid, Stephen, Barb, Lois, Lily, Dieter, Pam, and Dick. We lift Maggie, Sylvia, and Victoria in prayer as they rebuild their lives after a devastating house fire. Lord, we pray for those feeling challenged, facing fears, fear of failure, fear of disappointing others, fear of illness, those facing losses, loss of health, loss of finances, loss of independence, those facing worries, worry over employment, 
worry over loved ones, worry over what the future holds. Cover them in your loving arms and ignite your spirit of discernment within them. As COVID cases rise worldwide, we pray for frontline workers, including Melanie, and all those affected by the disease. We pray for Vivian, Lloyd's son Jeff and his family, Terry's cousins, Katie, Sue's niece, Patrice's parents, my student Josiah, and all diagnosed and fighting COVID. Heavenly Father, we pray for families who have lost loved ones to, to this disease. We pray for Barbara and Regina as they mourn the loss of Manny, son-in-law of Bill and Karen. We pray for Terry and her family as they mourn the loss of her aunt, Carlene. Lord, we thank you for the development of COVID vaccines and pray for those who receive them, that they will be protected. Gracious God, we ask that you fill us with patience, patience to help our children and grandchildren with their schoolwork, patience to wait for test results, and patience to wait for the return of normal life. Holy Spirit, fill us with faith for all the things there is a season, a beginning, and an end. Give us the strength to endure this season and faith to know that all things work together for your good. Amen. As you enjoy this song by our Joyful Noise Handbell Choir, you'll see instructions on the screen about how to give by mail or electronically through Vanco and PushPay. Please enjoy.
before we begin communion, let us uh, uh, share the time of confession and hear the words of forgiveness. Let us confess. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Before we continue with communion, let us take a moment and bless the elements that we are using, the bread and the wine, or whatever you are using in your own home, and they will be blessed as well. Good and gracious God, we do call upon you to bless the bread and the wine that we receive when we share this meal together. Strengthen us, renew us, and uplift us with your blessing this day. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, he gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> This is the body of Christ, given for you, take and eat. This is the blood of Christ, shed for you, take and drink.
Now may the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and His holy and precious blood, strengthen and keep you unto eternal life. Peace be with you. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift of faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You see the blessing? The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord makes face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join in our closing song reminding us of our joy in the Lord. Oh, happy day. See you next week. Yeah.